So I'm presenting this work on behalf of two colleagues, uh, Justin and Mariam, that couldn't be here. Uh, and ideally, I wanted to have the slides reflected here to read a few things because there is a little bit of text. So this contribution is a slightly different than some of the other work in that it uses science fiction to imagine a world of pervasive AI and how we could start putting ourselves into the future to ask a few questions. So let's start with the first question that triggered this story. So what happens when human civilization becomes dependent on AI's decision-making abilities? So here, let's imagine for a moment that the AI is perfected so much that actually we don't need to think anything. It does everything for us and the outcomes are fantastic. So I want to read a little bit about of the story to get some context. In the early days, laws were written to ensure that all decisions were locked, authenticated, traceable, explainable, replayable, examinable, and a bunch of other able descriptors. Decided the machines that made decisions were first developed for small purposes. What movie should I watch? What diaper should I watch? What should, who should I be friends with? What news stories should I read? But after it had been observed that decisions regarding the layer question caused an inexplicable group thinking event amongst the population of prominent first world nations. The elder decided, which turned out to be the last big decision that was ever made by people. <laughs> big decisions, those affecting massive populations, existing species, and land masses, could only be made with big information. And only the machines could collect, store, and process such big information. So now let's break down some of the characters in this story and some of the complexities so we can imagine a bit more detail. So here we have first the deciders. So think about the deciders as systems that govern every person's life. Then we have the prime decider, which makes decisions that affect all humanity. And then last we have the protagonist in our story, who is John. And what's interesting about John is that he is a decoder, whose job is to figure out the why of the decisions of the prime decider. So let me talk a little bit more about John and what being a decoder means in this future. So if decoders are individuals identified to have intuitive abilities, so high intelligence, and they are trained in machine learning, mathematics, and statistics. Their job is to explain the why of those decisions. So think about as John as a human embodiment of explainable AI, someone who can explain the why of those decisions. We also have the population of humans. So John is only one player, but what about the rest of the population? And should it be the same, should it be different? So we have zombies. So zombies are people whose lives are dictated by the deciders. They are happy not to question any decisions. They go along with all the decisions and they are happy in this way. We also have, on the other hand, free thinkers, who are people who issue deciders. So they choose not to rely on the deciders to live their lives and make any decisions. They are keepers of free will and preserve human thoughts. So there is a little bit of tension here because the free thinkers think that zombies are unable to question any, any decision. And the prime decider has actually decided that a small population of free thinkers should be allowed but it actually segregated and is not part of the society that chooses to accept all these decisions. So now we can move to some of the discussions. There are about five slides of questions. So what I was thinking we could do is, I talk a little bit about one, and if we have time, maybe we have two minutes of quick conversation, rapid fire, then we do the next slide, because otherwise it would be too many questions. To remember, so let's let's go to the first one. So, why would people blindly submit themselves to machines to dictate every aspect of their life? How did they end up in this state? Is our society heading towards a future as depicted in this story? That triggers the question: 
for us to put into practice. Should we have any safeguards that we need in decision making AI systems to avoid issues of blind trust? So with that we have two minutes. Any comments, any rapid fire? Uh, tell me what you think. One thought I have about that question is maybe reframing it to say how how do people perceive their expertise when they're working with these systems? So rather than blind trust, maybe pass it on the more positive. Sure, that's great. Yeah. Um, my immediate feedback on the first question was uh, out of convenience. People would accept uh, doing that. I don't need to choose uh, types of diapers or whatever you mentioned earlier. Yeah, yeah. Docker imagination would be um, financial systems are increasingly run by algorithms, which controls the financial system of the world and people's everyday people's behavior there. Um, Just an example, I, I moved to London four years ago. I have City Mapper. It tells me where to go. I use it all the time. It knows things about cancellations and delays that I can't know. So I don't have to know how to go from point A to point B. Uh, two safeguards rather than into other decision making systems should be in education and culture. Yeah. Cool. So let's just. Human education. All right, let's move to the next scenario. <coughs> so, how realistic are the zombies? Will people ever trust AI systems so much that they no longer question their decisions? What might you such trust? Is desirable or not to have such trust in AI systems? When, when other people act against the recommendations mm -hmm. of an AI system, so. It is very realistic, it already happens. Yeah. People that drive their car to a ditch, you know who the GPS talking to. <laughs> or the Uber drivers that they follow the system blindly even though they can see the road and where they should go. So this is not very realistic. People like a system had permission to uh, keep scrolling through a feed or clicking on ads. So it's not very unrealistic. I would even say that trust is nothing deliberate, so it's not not even trust we have in these systems, we just it just happens. See that. <laughs> so that people do not actively think about do I trust the sin, they just let it happen and they don't think about it. And I, I'm afraid to freeze it with this because we already have a lot of zombies in the world and uh, they um, <laughs> increase, I'm afraid. Uh, I think it ha it's realistic because traditionally it happened <coughs> out of the AI systems, like back to what uh, example that about the uh, autonomous cars. I don't want somebody to explain to me to trust it. I go on a plane any day. It's it was a dangerous thing to do at the beginning, but now everybody nobody asks uh, you know explanation of how the plane works. We just go on it and we use it. And it's just one brief, brief comment. I kind of like this was the point where otherwise the conversation between us got this was the point where we really stumbled because it kind of sets up this idea of human thought and like this kind of like notion of human technology, which kind of seems a bit like in contrast with like the future thinking, right? It is, it's like a really old concept that like economy, so that's my comment. Sure. Because, yeah, that's just that's the just uh, what's the descale of new generation? Like I don't know how to drive a manual car, so how the new generation born into this world, how things will be that's so thank you. Let's let's just quickly move to the next one. So next one, why does the society need decoders? So let's remember John, our decoder, their job is to explain the decisions made by the system. If AI is really perfected, will there be any for explanations or interpretable modes? So let me just quickly touch on these two points. So first, they mentioned that AI will never be truly perfected and will always need input from people, retraining the correct for this original brief. And second, the AI might have been tampered with, so for example, adversarial attacks, requiring human intervention to the deck and remediate. Yeah. So the question here is, are there some decisions we should never let AI make? Uh, I think we can look at this and see how people see God and priests. 
It's the same thing. <laughs> you have a perfect entity, and some people call priests to explain the entity. Yeah. So you are suggesting... <coughs> they would follow the tradition of the leader. That's how it is. I think an important point of this story, which not everyone has gotten to read yet, but I hope that you all will, is that it's talking about the perfectness and how what it's you know doing a good job at is sort of the global amount. So it's, you know they're talking about taking things away from parents to become decoders. That's better for the society, but it's not about for an individual. And so the explanations are there for it's really important to know how is this going to affect me. This is something that always is struggling, but I. I started, I read all the science fiction, I started to think about the plot. And uh, I didn't see the, what are machines optimizing for? There's no human in the loop to, to, to uh, fulfill an evolving set of human goals. So when machines have goals, they think they know what's best for humans and they're gonna do it. How do they seek feedback? I don't know. What are the metrics? I don't know. So part of me thought that the deciders, the decoders here were a Deus Ex Machina, artifact to almost pacify humans, to make them believe that things are under control. We have humans that you know, are looking into the system. In reality, we're lost. So. <laughs> Sorry, so last comment. The, the answer to that question, I would say, is all decisions. I would say we should uh, dismiss the idea of AI as a decision, decision maker and uh, promote the idea of AI as input to human decision making. All of them. Are decoders beneficial for or detrimental to society? How might we have, how might they have enabled people to become so dependent on the cybers? What could they have done to prevent that dependency from forming? So might we eventually cripple our own ability to make decisions if we rely too much on AI? Uh, so this strikes me as like, uh, if we go all the way back to like when people were inventing written language, the arguments that people would no longer be able to remember things because they write it down and so they lose the cognitive capacity to do these things. And this comes up fairly regularly throughout sort of technological history. And it strikes me that a similar thing is happening here, which is the notion of if AI is better at making decisions and more optimal decisions, that will somehow lose the cognitive abilities to make these decisions themselves. And I'm not convinced that's what's ever happened in sort of the history of humanity. Actually, I got a really good point to do from that too. It went back all the way to reading language to bring it here, but maybe there is something in between, which is when people started to rely too much on GPS for navigation, and now we are losing our capability to navigate in these spaces because we are relying too much on the GPS. So how, how do we design for a GPS that actually is going to support us bringing up those skills of remembering in space, for example? I think the question here is uh, whether we need those skills anymore. Um, and um, what my initial comment is, uh, I think the more we need, we want to go to this direction, the more humanization of the eye we need to go through in order to arrive at the acceptance um, that, that you're hinting at. So, um, in essence, like people started trusting all these systems, Alexa and Google when, when they actually felt they were talking to a person. Um, so I think there is a step of humanization of the eye to make it accessible. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just the last one. Why did the prime cider allow free thinker <laughs> to exist? What does it mean for someone to opt out of an AI driven society and does one have the right to do so? <laughs> well, so do the uh, deciders always agree? Because I would say, no, so the, 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 the things around us are probabilistic and we don't, we're probably never going to be able to measure everything exactly. So you can train algorithms on different things, they can disagree, making different assumptions. Yeah. And you have a recommender system for Microsoft versus for Google. So it actually comes also
actually move on, but that's all I'll talk about this over the break. <laughs> When is the sci-fi novel coming out?